When I speak of colonialism, Germany is not the first country that comes to mind. A lot of people think of the British Empire. However, Germany did have colonial possessions in Africa and Asia. And its colonial army, the name of that army was the Schutztruppe. In this video, we're going to talk about that army formation. Germany was a fairly late comer when it came down to nation building. For many decades, Germany consisted of separate states. An ambitious politician called Otto von Bismarck, he managed to unite these states after wars with Denmark, Austria and France. In 1871, he proclaimed the German Empire. Von Bismarck's ambitions also led to the foundation of the German colonial empire. Under Bismarck's rule, Germany would acquire most of its colonies. What is so interesting is that Bismarck himself always referred to himself as kein Kolonialmensch. In other words, he was not a colonial person. However, Germany did acquire overseas possessions. Bismarck, you know, he didn't really want to start a colonial venture because of economic reasons. It would cost Germany money. However, he later changed his opinion and now pragmatic reasons had the upper hand. A colonial empire would legitimize his rule. Speaking of power, absolute power was in the hands of the monarch Wilhelm I and Bismarck had great influence over him. However, he died in 1888. He was succeeded by Friedrich III and he died of cancer 99 days later. After this, Wilhelm II ascended to the throne. Now he pushed Bismarck aside and he went his own way. Bismarck eventually resigned in 1890. Wilhelm II had much more aggressive policies than Bismarck. Wilhelm II he wanted to turn Germany into a global power by building a big navy and overseas empire. And so Germany acquired its colonial empire. It would acquire territories in Africa. There was German West Africa, German East Africa, German Southwest Africa, and also in China, the Germans leased a part of the Kiachau Bay area, which became known as German Tsingtao. In the Pacific, the Germans would also acquire territories Kaiser Wilhelm's land, which was the northeastern part of what is now Papua New Guinea. And then there were also several Pacific islands the Germans administrated. The Germans saw their colonies as protectorates in German Schutzgebiet, so its forces were named Schutztruppen. In 1888, the first German troops were sent to Southwest Africa. These Truppe des Reichskommissars were led by Lieutenant Ulrich von Quitzow and consisted of two officers and five NCOs who commanded 20 African soldiers from the Bastar and Nama people to protect the first imperial commissioner. His name was Dr. Heinrich Göring and he was the father of what would later be the infamous Nazi Hermann Göring. Later the size of the force expanded. Their name was officially changed to the Kaiserliche Schutztruppe by an imperial order in 1895. Did you know the German colonial army was actually the smallest colonial army? By 1900 they only had 3 thousand soldiers and officers. Now during times of the resistance wars or rebellions, if you take it from the European perspective, such as the Herero uprising in 1904-1907, the force exceeded to 17,000 men. But by 1914 it was numbered back to the amount of 1900, even less. In smaller colonies such as Togo, New Guinea and Samoa, there were no troops, only paramilitary police. The Schutztruppe in each colony was led by officer and NCO volunteers from the Imperial Army and Navy. And in Southwest Africa, where relations between the colonizers and the indigenous population were the most hostile, the rank and file were also German. Despite the dangers of combat and disease, such as postings were popular among adventurous soldiers bored by the rigid routines of home service. And the pay rates were attractive. 
The Schutztruppe in German East Africa as well as Cameroon relied on large numbers of Africans. The Africans drafted in East Africa were named Askaris and they could serve for a five-year term which could be extended. There were high standards of discipline. They were drilled and trained up to regular German army standards. They were among the best African troops on the continent being well armed, highly motivated and with relatively good pay as compared with other European colonial armies. The Schutztruppe were controlled by the Ministry of Colonial Affairs, Reichskolonialamt, therefore weren't under control by the Ministry of War. Therefore, the regulations regarding uniforms differed a little bit compared to the German Home Army. We get to that later. There were police troops. Each colony had its own police troops or Polizeitruppen, which were led by Germans with the ordinary policemen recruited locally with the exception of German Southwest Africa where most Germans served in the police which was called the Landespolizei there, the state police. These police forces did receive some military training and were armed with infantry weapons. More about weapons later. The job was to collect taxes and keep law and order during peacetime. I read that in the Pacific these police troops also served as postmen sometimes. The Imperial Navy. The German Imperial Navy, the Kaiserliche Marine, played an important role in maintaining the colonies. German warships visited the colonies on a regular basis and were able to provide artillery support in case of hostilities. Tsingtao in that sense was unique since it was only governed by the navy and naval troops and its port served for the German East Asian fleet. And some colonies also had non-military ships which were used for the transportation of supplies. The Marine Infantry. The German Marine Infantry Battalions, Se Battalione, were a part of the Imperial Navy but were trained and uniformed in the style of the Imperial Army but with additional training at sea. The 1st and 2nd Sea Battalione were stationed in China, ready to be shipped out in case of need. The 3rd Sea Battalion was permanently based in Tsingtao. The German Marines fought in China during the Boxer Rebellion and in Africa during the Herero Uprising and the Maji Maji Rebellion. What about air power? The very first use of aircraft were balloon mounted aerials for telegraphic communications during the Herero Rebellion. Manned aircraft saw action in the First World War and were not used in combat in the colonies until the First World War. German Southwest Africa, German East Africa and Tsingtao each had one or two airplanes. They were mainly used for reconnaissance and by 1915 these were all out of action. When we talk about the Schutztruppe and their uniforms there is, as we know with Germany, a large variety of uniforms. What you need to realize is that the uniforms of the home army were field gray. However, khaki tropical uniforms were authorized in 1894. There were also Koderai uniforms. The slouch hat was also gray. Depending which colony the soldier was stationed, the color of the band and edging differed. White for East Africa, red for Cameroon, blue for Southwest Africa. And then there were also field caps and tropical pit helmets. Ascaris wore the tar bush, sometimes provided with neck shades, high riding boots, lower jack boots, as well as ankle boots with leather gaiters or patis were worn by the Schutztruppe. Initially, the Schutztruppe carried variants of the Mauser M1871 rifle, such as the Carabiner 71 and the Jägerbüchse 71. By 1940, most troops had the M1898 rifle, also known as the Gewehr 98, or a variant like the Car Carabiner 98AZ. They also had machine guns and in East Africa, Southwest Africa and Cameroon there were also artillery units who had outdated weaponry. Now if you want to know more about uniforms and weapons there is a very cool website that I also use as a source for this video. I'll put a link under sources so if you're interested check out that website. The Schutztruppe would come to an end but they did not go down without a fight. During the First World War, most German colonies were surrounded by what were now enemies. And eventually all these colonies were taken by the Entente. After the First World War, Germany lost its colonies. The whole battle for these colonies is something I elaborated on in 
other videos there is the overview video which you can check out right here and if you're interested in one of the most unique stories of the battle of the colonies in the first world war you want to know more about the german east africa campaign you can click right here if you haven't checked it out. Thanks to my patrons and a special thanks to Peter King, Tanya Dixie, Henry Larson, Rob Park, RL and Coolin Castleman. And a special thanks to Coolin Castleman because Coolin Castleman, he's a patron and he requested me to do this episode to Coolin. I hope you liked this episode. Leave a comment down below. As for the others, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, also leave a comment down below and subscribe. We're done.